Okay, I'll uh, call this regular meeting of council Tuesday, May 12th, 2020 at 7 p.m. to order. And we'll have the national anthem. And just for our council and staff, turn off their audio video for the playing of the national anthem. Okay, everybody back. Okay, I'd like to begin this meeting by acknowledging that the land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe and the Haudenosaunee peoples, acknowledging the One Bowl and Spoon Treaty. And I look now to any disclosures of pecuniary interest or general nature thereof, Councillor McCollum. So I have a conflict of interest on staff report PWSR 003-2020. Okay, duly noted. Uh, no further. Okay, and we'll move into the uh, mayor's remarks. <clears throat> uh, please note today that our, our meeting today is not being broadcast live. Uh, we are recording it and we'll share it to our website afterwards. Uh, weather permitting on Thursday, May 14th, 9 p.m., the Niagara Light of Hope will be shining in Waynefleet. Niagara 2021 Canada Summer Games spearheaded this initiative in partnership with production services industry. Be sure to keep an eye out, uh, but please refrain, refrain from congregating for viewing. Uh, that's the blue lights that are gonna shine way up into the sky. Uh, but both the Police Services Board and Regional Council will meet on Thursday, May 21st at 8.30 a.m. and 6.30 respectively. The next regular meeting of council is scheduled for Tuesday, June the 2nd. And our emergency control group continues to meet regularly through the week to review the status of COVID-19 and to guide the township through the process to the eventual recovery phase. We are taking our lead from the provincial and regional medical health experts and starting to consider the status of events over the next few months. And I'll look to our CAO if you have any further just addition to that, uh, Mr. Colossa. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, members of Council, as the Mayor indicated, uh, the group is continuing to meet regularly. And over the last week and a half or so, the province has issued upwards of 80 different guidelines providing direction regarding the eventual reopening of businesses and return to normalcy. Um, staff are currently in the midst of reviewing these guidelines. And over the next week, we will be meeting to uh, establish and review plans uh, for Wayne Fleet moving forward. We still do not know uh, when these services will resume. We still do not know when the province will actually be reopening, um, but um, our processes are being put in place now so that when those announcements are made, uh, we will be prepared and ready to go. Again, our decisions are informed by the and directed by uh, the region and the province in this regard. We do know that things uh, will need to happen differently moving forward. Uh, the guidelines speak to social distancing, increased efforts for cleanliness and sanitization, uh, particularly for common areas, as well as the introduction of safety and protective devices 
uh, both for uh, residents and for staff. Um, we anticipate bringing a report to the next meeting of council that will sort of outline um, our planning efforts and identify some of the uh, uh, priorities that we have or will have moving forward. Also at the next meeting of council, uh, we hope to bring a second uh, financial update report, um, which will provide you more of a, a second look uh, at the impact of the COVID-19 situation on the township, very similar to the one we did at the last meeting. So those are, I suppose, my comments at this time. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, uh, Will. Um, I look to uh, any councillors have any updates or reports. Councillor Cridlin. Uh, thank you, through you, Mayor. Um, two things again, NPCA update. Uh, there is a board summary report from the April 16th re, uh, meeting um, in our correspondence file on the, on the public on our, on our website. And the next regular full authority meeting will be Thursday, May 21st uh, at 930. Uh, it is also a virtual meeting. Um, and the last thing is uh, it's in the public domain now that the Gord Harry Trail, among other properties, are beginning to be opened. Um, again, this is a, a changing day by day as we start to open up. So I would encourage residents to continue to check again with official sites, the NPCA site particularly, on how these areas are going to open up and uh, hopefully we can get to our new normal quicker. Thank you. Okay, any other comments? Okay, we'll move on to minutes of the regular meeting uh, held April 21st, 2020. Are there any uh, comments, corrections uh, in there? Okay, seeing none, I uh, can have a uh, mover and a seconder, please. Uh, the motion is that the minutes of the regular meeting council held April 21st, 2020 be adopted as circulated. Uh, Councillor Cridlin, your hand went up. Okay, Councillor Cridlin, seconder. Councillor Van Vliet, any discussion? Okay, uh, recorded vote, uh, Councillor Cridlin. In favor? Councillor Gilmore. In favor. Councillor McCollum. In favor. And Councillor Van Vliet. In favor. Okay, those are carried. Now I look to the minutes of the special meeting of Council held April 28, 2020. Any comments or corrections there on that special meeting? Councillor uh, Van Vliet. Um, after reading it over and having discussions with a few residents, um, I would like to dissolve the Fire Recovery Committee, or sorry, the Fire Review Committee. I feel that, and so many of you residents, that it's just going to be going in circles. If we have a committee, look at things, they're going to ask staff for a report. Staff's going to do a report. That committee can't approve anything, so it has to come back to council regardless. We're going to discuss it, send it back for whatever needs to be tweaked. So I feel like it's going to be going in a circle, and this is what I heard from residents as well. But it's just going to be a lot of doubling up as where staff's already taken so many steps to get to where we need to be. And so I would like to dissolve that committee. Okay. Any other comments or discussions? <laughs> Council Gilmore? Should we take it up under other business? I mean, it, it, what we're just approving the minutes, so th that's what happened in the meeting. If, uh, if we want to have a discussion about this, uh, to me, it should be done in other business. Yeah, I'll look to the clerk on that. We've, go ahead, uh, clerk. Through you, Mr. Mayor, to all of Council, uh, this would be the appropriate time to bring it up because we are considering the minutes and that motion was um, passed in these minutes. So what I would suggest, you have a couple of options if you're going to go that route, Councillor Van Vliet, um, we can adopt the minutes and um, immediately after that you either have the option to reconsider uh, that motion to establish the committee or you have the option to rescind that decision, which would essentially be like it never happened. Um, however, both of those motions would, they do require a notice of motion. Uh, so council would have to waive their procedure bylaw to allow the motion to come forward this evening. 
Thank you. Uh, any other discussion? I, I know where uh, Councillor Van Vliet is, and I'm going to jump in here too because uh, afterwards I was looking at that and I thought, you know, that's a discussion that we should have in, in uh, the full council at a regular council meeting. Uh, you know, out there, straightforward. And uh, so I think that we kind of got a little bit waylaid there, and, and I'll take that responsibility. We should have. Uh, just to put that onto the next agenda and had a fulsome discussion on it. So um, I agree with uh, Councillor Van Vliet there. So I believe we need to waive our bylaws on that. So, uh, and then we can either rescind it or, um, but we need further discussion on it if anybody wants to, to jump in. I'm not, I think that we just, we fully have to have the conversations that we intend to have, but I think that we should do it in council um, with all of us there present. So. I'm not saying we don't do the discussion. It's just the forum how we do it. So, any comments on that? That's Council exactly. Van Vliet. Where, oh, sorry. That's exactly where I was going. I didn't know which which meeting to do it in or what context to do it in. So, thank you for the guidance. Councillor Cridlin, you had your hand up first. Sorry, Councillor McCall. No problem. Uh, no, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Again, just to have the discussion that we need to, um, you know, to continue to move things forward, because that's really our goal. And if there's a sense that a committee is something that maybe, you know, slows things down for whatever reason, uh, you know, if we're hearing from the public, then that's what we're here to listen to. So uh, we, the discussion happened at the special meeting that got us to a point where we, you know, we want to move forward. The fact that it's a committee or not a committee, I'm not necessarily attached to. I'm more wanting to make sure we we take just enough to get something done and started. So I'm more inclined to as long as we can, you know, put this sort of again. I go with the phase one, phase two type of thinking. Um, whether it's a committee or not, I'm not necessarily attached to a committee necessarily. Um, okay. So, yeah. So you're of the same thought as as uh, everybody else. Uh, uh, Madam Clerk. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so the way that I would suggest proceeding with this would be to adopt the draft minutes um, that are presented uh, in the agenda package. Then um, a motion needs to be made to waive the procedure by law. Then a motion to rescind the previous motion adopted to establish the committee is where we can have this discussion. Okay, thank you. And I saw Councillor uh, Collins' hand was up as well. So, I don't care how we do this, but somewhere in the very near future, we have to get an answer what we're going to do and get this done. So, we can rescind this, let it go. I'd like to have that conversation tonight. We talked about how much money we were going to go. Oh, you're shaking your head no, but we talked about the number of dollars. This fire hall will never get built if we keep pushing it on and pushing it on. Believe me, I want to build a fire hall. I'm the most adamant to do that. It's just, we can't keep pushing it back and pushing it back. Another three weeks, another three weeks. Let's get this thing done. No, I, I was just shaking my head because it's not on the agenda for tonight, so we can't do it tonight. Uh, I'm with you in agreement. That's what we need to do. So let's, um, we'll, we'll look after this uh, committee that was struck, first of all, if, if uh, that is what everybody wants. And then we'll just end up having that uh, discussion in a regular council meeting. Uh, uh, with everybody present and under normal. If the committee is an extra step of, you know, it's unnecessary really. So uh, Madam Clerk was, was right on. So we need to, first of all, adopt these minutes. So I look for a, uh, a mover on those minutes to be adopted, please. Councillor McClellan, seconder. Councillor Van Vliet, all in favor. Oh, I have to do it this way. Councillor Gilmore. In favor. Councillor Cridland. In favor. Councillor McClellan. In favor. Councillor Van Vliet. In favor. Okay, so those minutes are adopted. Now we have to have a motion to um, not follow the bylaw so that we can uh, redo this again. Um, so I need a motion on that, please. What's the wording on that, Meredith? Just to. Um, I'll come up with uh, the exact wording, but basically that. Um, section 14.17 of the procedure by law be waived to allow for um, council to rescind 
um, a motion previously passed. Okay, that's the motion of mover and a seconder on that, please. Councillor Van Bleek, seconder. Councillor Cridlin. Okay, any discussion? Okay, seeing none, uh, Councillor Van Bleek. Oh, hang on, Councillor Cridlin. Thank, thank you, through you, Mayor. Just to, for us to be familiar with the procedures, so the rescinding, it goes back, we revert back to zero. Um, and yes. if there was any talk about any kinds of conditions or anything, that's not at this point in the process. First, we're just, we end everything. We're just voting to uh, the set aside the procedure by law. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification. And, and uh, I'll have your vote on that, please, uh, Councillor Cridlin. In favor. And Councillor Van Vliet. In favor. Councillor Gilmore. In favor. Councillor McClellan. And in favor. Okay, our procedure bylaw is set aside. And uh, now we need a motion to um, dissolve this uh, committee. So I look for somebody to make a motion for that. Councillor Van Vliet. I'll make that motion. Okay, um, seconder. Councillor Gilmore. Discussion? Okay, seeing none, uh, Councillor Van Vliet, in favor or opposed? In favor. Councillor uh, McClellan? In favor. Councillor Gilmore? In favor. Councillor Cridlin? In favor. Okay, that has been rescinded. Okay. And there's nothing more on that one. And so what will, Councillor, or, or <laughs> Mr. CAO will. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, um, with that sort of dissolution of that committee, uh, there was a meeting that was originally scheduled to occur tomorrow afternoon um, with the committee no longer in existence. Uh, that meeting will no longer need to take place. So we will uh, provide notice to the public of that change. Uh, that said, there was some information and it does seem like uh, council does wish to continue to move this matter forward. Uh, there was some information that was assembled for the committee and that is something that can be returned to council uh, for your next meeting, um, either the next regular meeting or under new business perhaps, if you would like to establish a special meeting or have staff poll council afterwards to determine whether you wanna hold a special meeting to deal with that uh, we can receive that direction under new business later in the meeting. Okay, and I think that's what we'll do because uh, Councillor uh, McClellan's points are valid. Uh, everybody's waiting for this thing to get built. Um, let's get it built. So uh, the faster we have that uh, fulsome discussion, the better. So uh, during new business, we'll uh, try to find ourselves a date and time that we can have that next meeting and have that uh, discussion. So. Okay, so we'll bring that up under new business. Any other uh, comments on this issue? Okay, seeing none, um, down to our uh, one delegation, I believe. And that's Robin Stebner, the Big Lurie Group, proposed telecommunications tower at 85766 Canborough Road. And uh, can we, oh, there she is. Can you hear me? Oh, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Sorry to interrupt, but there's a motion to waive the procedure by law again to allow for the electronic delegation. Oh, right, right. Sorry, uh, Robin, just sit tight for a second. Um, a motion that council waive uh, 5.14D of the procedure by law number 58, 2019, to permit the electronic delegation presentation from Robin Stebner with the Big Larry Group during the May 12, 2020 regular council meeting. I need a mover and a seconder for that, please. Councillor McClellan and moved by, or seconded by Councillor Gilmore. Is there any discussion on that? Okay, seeing none, I need a recorded uh, vote. Councillor McClellan? Favor. Councillor Gilmore? Favor. Councillor Van Vliet? In favor. Councillor Cridland? In favor. Okay, and that's carried. Thank you for that, uh, Madam Clerk. 
Okay, so I'd like to invite Ms. Stebner from the Big Larry Group to make her presentation to Council respecting this telecommunications tower. And uh, you have the floor, Robin. Um, all right, so I'll be sharing my screen this evening just to confirm. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Yep. All right. Uh, so good evening, Mayor and members of Council. My name is Robin Stebner and I am a planner with the Big Leary Group. Thank you for this opportunity to speak with you this evening on behalf of our client SBA Canada for the proposed telecommunication tower at 85766 Cambrai Road. In tonight's presentation, I will be introducing SBA Canada, as well as providing an overview of the application for the proposed telecommunication tower, which includes tower details, adherence to federal regulations, and the public consultation that was completed to date. SBA Canada is an independent Canadian company that focuses on providing and building telecommunication tower infrastructure. They promote uh, both towers and sites to all radio network users. And this includes mobile phone operators, broadcasters, police services, utilities, and municipalities. They also assist wireless service providers in developing their own networks. And this includes site acquisition, zoning, construction, and equipment installation. Uh, so SBA has identified the area surrounding the subject site as an area in need of new wireless telecommunication infrastructure. The subject site for the proposed tower is located at 85766 Cambrai Road in Dunville, uh, and it's approximately 365 meters east of the Robinson Road and Cambrai Road intersection, uh, and it's just outlined here in the red uh, outline there. The site is located on the north side of Canberra Road and is bound by Welland River um, along the site's west, north, and east boundaries. And on the opposite side of Welland River is the township of West, west Lincoln, uh, which is shown in the blue transparent overlay. Uh, also on this figure, you can see the locations of the nearest residential buildings and where the tower is proposed to be located on the subject site, which is outlined here in this blue box. The subject site is currently um, used by EarthGen International Limited, which is a tree nursery. Uh, so they grow trees and as a result of the proposed tower, uh, their operations will not be impacted and will operate as usual. Uh, so here we have a more detailed view of the plan. Um, the proposed telecommunication tower and the compound that will surround it is located just north of the existing buildings on site, which is about 210 meters north of uh, Canberra Road. Uh, so to access the tower compound, there will be a six meter wide access and utility easement that will be established and it will follow along the existing driveway on the site. The tower is a tripole structure and it will be 70 meters in height and at the top of it, there will be a two meter lightning rod. Uh, so you can see here in the right hand image, uh, this provides a quick elevation of what the tower will look like. Uh, here we have a bit more of a detailed view of what the compound itself will look like, uh, as well as on the right hand side, we have an elevation of what the tower and the compound will look like at ground level. The compound will be 20 meters by 20 meters in size uh, and it will be surrounded by a chain link fence for security reasons. Uh, as per section 7 of the Innovation Science and Economic Development Guidelines, also known as CPC 2003, uh, proponents must also fulfill other obligations and comply with federal regulations. Uh, this includes compliance with Health Canada's Safety Code 6, uh, which outlines radio frequency immunity criteria and um, limits for human exposure. Uh, we are also required to fulfill notifying nearby broadcasting stations of the proposed tower, as well as meet all environmental requirements in compliance with the Canadian Environmental Protection Act. 
uh, as well as Transport Canada and NAV Canada with regards to aeronautical safety responsibilities. Public notification was provided in compliance with the Innovation Science and Economic Development Regulations. Uh, public notification packages were sent to residents that were located within the required circulation area and a public notice newspaper advertisement was published in both the Port Col Colborne Leader as well as the Grimsby Lincoln News in the editions of Niagara this week, which was published on December 12, 2019. The Township of West Lincoln and the Attercliff Christian Reformed Elementary School were also sent notification packages due to their proximity to the subject site. As a result of the public notification, we received comments from residents located at 6846 South Chippewa Road, as well as the Township of West Lincoln. Uh, the comments that we received from the residents uh, were related to environmental matters, uh, including um, as well as uh, reasons for the site location and justification and some concerns about health matters. So the comments related to the environmental uh, concerns included concerns about the proximity and potential impacts of the proposed tower to Welland River, the designated environmental protection and conservation area, and the regulated wetland in the surrounding area, as well as potential impacts to wildlife. Uh, when we were selecting a site for the location, the surrounding area and environmental features were an important consideration for us. Uh, we utilize NPCA and Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry mapping to determine an appropriate location and to ensure that the tower was appropriately set back from these features. The proposed tower is located approximately 140 meters from the provincially significant wetland and is 75 meters from the river's stable top of bank. In both these regards, the tower is located outside of any regulated areas and will have no impacts on the environmental features. Uh, additional comments that we received with regards to the sites, um, the consideration of the subject site for the tower and if other sites were considered, um, the residents also raised uh, some comments about the proximity of the tower to residential dwellings in the area and potential views of the tower from the surrounding area. During the site selection process, uh, existing structures were evaluated for co-locating co opportunities. Um, however, it was identified that the nearest tower or structure was 5.2 kilometers to the north, which is a bell structure, um, but it was determined that this was too far to provide adequate coverage. Um, the height of the tower is based on a couple different conditions. Um, so that is the reason for the height of the structure. Uh, and these conditions include matters such as topography, client usage, usage patterns, radio frequency characteristics of an area, um, and any obstructions in the area such as trees and buildings. Um, so these conditions are considered to ensure that there's a continuous uninterrupted network and a strong signal throughout the area. Um, to help mitigate with any potential visual impacts, the tower has been designed in a minimalistic design and will be painted in a neutral color. And the last set of comments that were raised by the residents um, dealt with some health con concerns uh, and they raised questions about how Health Canada exposure limits would be complied with and maintained during the lifetime of the tower and in consideration when there are multiple <coughs> Uh, carriers on the tower. So throughout a tower's lifetime, the radio frequency energy of the equipment that is located on the tower, it's considered at multiple stages throughout. Uh, so it's anytime a carrier wants to install equipment on the tower, they have to obtain a spectrum license. Uh, and during that time, they have to verify that their equipment complies with Health Canada's safety limits. Also compliance with safety code six is an ongoing obligation and ISIC can re audit the tower at any time and residents can request that an audit is completed as well. Um, so there is always an ongoing compliance um, that's in place to ensure that the, the towers and the equipment on the towers are within the safety limits. Uh, Health Canada Safety Code 6, it also sets in 
very large safety margins to ensure that there are no impacts. So the safety margins are at least 50 fold below the safety uh, margin limits. Uh, in conclusion, we have read the staff report and we support the conclusions and recommendations. And I would just like to thank you for this opportunity to delegate and please let me know if you have any questions. Okay. Um, thank you, Ms. Stebner. And uh, can everybody hear me? Gonna... Yes. Okay. Um, any questions, please, from counselors? Councillor McCollum? Yes, I would just wondering, is this going to help us with our Wi-Fi out in the western part of town? Or, um, you know, is Wi-Fi not part of this and it's just cellular? Uh, so through you, Mayor, to Councillor McLean, uh, it, it is possible that it could improve Wi-Fi. It depends on which carriers um, decide to lease space on the tower. So internet so providers could lease space on the tower. So any internet provider is capable of leasing space? To the mayor, yes, that's correct. Thank you. Okay, other questions? I don't have everybody in front of me. I still have the map, so I can't see. Um, um, I had a question. What was the, oh, Councillor Cridlin, go ahead, please. Uh, thank you, through you, Mayor. Um, I think similar along Councillor McClellan's uh, line of questioning, just really understanding, um, you know, in terms of the expectations, uh, the benefits for the area. So is it, a, a, I guess it's, with the tower going up, that's nothing. That's the infrastructure for then the cellular companies and the internet companies. So, um, you know, for residents watching this tower go up, that's just the beginning. Uh, there's no expectation of service yet. This will enable service and our expansion of internet is that i think you're really just clarifying uh further um based on your other comment but if you could just kind of expand on that a little bit more that'd be great yes yeah, so through uh the mayor to councillor Kridlan, uh that's correct so the tower provides the, the structure itself and then uh sba they lease space on the tower to either sell your network providers um it could also be emergency services such as fire department or ambulance services, uh, internet um, providers as well. So typically, um, once SBA gets approval, they won't build until they do have people in line to lease space on the tower. Uh, so once they're at a point when they do have people uh, interested in leasing space, then they will proceed with building permits and construction at that time. Okay. Uh, further questions? I have one, uh, Ms. Stebner. What was the what was the start of this? Uh, um, there must have been a, a, a reason uh, that it started there, or you're just uh, your company's out looking for places to put up towers, or was somebody come to you and and say that we need more service there? Or can you enlighten that a little bit, please? Uh, yeah, yeah. So through the mayor. Um, SBA, as part of their um, as part of their process, they identify areas that require additional coverage, or if the the networks aren't functioning at full capacity, um, they're either approached by cellular networks or other types of infrastructure, um, or through um, notice to them, they will complete analysis of these areas uh, to, to identify uh, areas that do require the additional network coverage. Okay, so there's no um, government involved uh, from the federal government as a as a program to enhance uh, internet and other services uh, that we've been hearing about. It's not connected to that at all. Through the mayor to Mayor Gibson, um, not that I'm aware of. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other questions? Just one. Yeah. Councillor McClellan, go ahead. So it's my understanding that it, right now they're asking for permission to build this, but until they actually sell the space, this may not get built for two or three or four or five years. They're just doing the study at this point. Is that correct? So through the mayor to Councillor McLean, uh, it, it's my understanding that they do have people interested um, at this time. Um, and this has been identified as an area that does require it. So I, I anticipate that it will be built sooner. Um, than two or three years. 
Okay, thank you. Okay, and Councillor Cridland. Uh, thank you, through you, Mayor. Um, so today, uh, we're going to look later at a, a substantial uh, planner's re report and recommendation, and it does talk about a letter, a concurrence letter. Um, is that something that you have a template for that we pretty much just fill out, or what, can you tell me a little bit more about the letter that you're looking for from your perspective? Thank you. And I look to our clerk uh, to speak to that, please. Um, I would suggest uh, receiving the delegation for information and then um, providing those questions to, to Sarah during her report. Thank you. Okay, if there's no other questions, um, thank you, Ms. Stebner, for the presentation. It's uh, very good. Uh, the announcement or the motion is that the delegation pre presentation from Robin Stebner, the Big Larry Group, Respecting a proposed telecommunications tower at 85766 Camborough Road be received for information. I need a mover and a seconder for that, please. Uh, moved by Councillor McClellan, second by Councillor Van Vliet. Any discussion? Okay, seeing none, a recorded vote. Councillor Gilmore? In favor. Councillor McClellan? In favor. Councillor Cridland? In favor. And Councillor Van Vliet? In favor. Okay, and that report is received. Um, so now we're going to um, change the order here of the agenda. Uh, it makes uh, sense for us to have our planner Sarah speak to this as well. So I think we have to do a vote on that, yes? To change the agenda or? General consent is fine. Okay, general consent uh, that we take uh, Sarah's report, which is relevant to this uh, presentation, and move that forward, and we'll do that right now. Is uh, everybody in agreement with that? Yes. Yeah. Any, any no's? Okay. Um, then we look forward to uh, Sarah doing her report, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, to uh, you and all of council. So Robin went into detail about you know the site and the proposed tower. Um, and some of those drawings were also contained in Appendix B of the report. Um, so I'll just go in and provide us some additional comments for Council's consideration. Um, so it's important to note that the Township is a, a stakeholder in terms of um, uh, the project and we're to be consulted with. Um, ultimately, it's up to Innovation Science and Economic Development Canada to review and approve the, the project. So basically, um, what Robin is looking for is whether or not council is supportive of the project and that will um, help build um, documentation in terms of the review uh, to ICD Canada. Um, so as Robin mentioned, um, they completed the, the required public notification with direct mailing to adjac adjacent landowners, um, as well as consultation with West Lincoln. Um, she went into detail about the resident concerns from a uh, resident in West Lincoln uh, about environmental and health concerns. Um, and that correspondence was also attached as Appendix C in the report. Um, so in terms of my opinion, I'm satisfied that in terms of the response provided, uh, that, that addresses the residents' concerns in West Lincoln um, and that it was adequately addressed in, in that response email. Um, and I'll note that there was no, there was no uh, comments received from Wayne Fleet residents. Um, so the information was also circulated to uh, other township departments and um, uh, through that circulation the fire department did note that there may be interest in uh, reserving some space for uh, fire department communications equipment uh, to assist with coverage in the area. Um, in terms of the township's official plan and zoning bylaw, uh, telecommunication towers are not um, subject to municipal land use policies. Um, however, I did go into detail and um, outlining kind of the official plan designations of the property um, in terms of the impact uh, from a land use perspective. Um, but it's, it's my opinion that the proposed tower will have little uh, land use impact on the surrounding area. Um, and I've re recommended that council support the, the project um, with a condition that, uh, you know, opportunities for that co-location to support the fire department be um, be considered in that approval. Thank you, uh, Sarah. So the motion is that the planning staff report PSR 006 be received. 
and that Council support the installation of a telecommunications tower for the lands known as 85766 Canberra Road in the Township of Wainfleet, subject to the following condition that the Big Larry Group Limited and SBA Canada explore opportunities for co-location of fire department communications equipment and that Council authorize staff to prepare a letter of concurrence for this uh, project. So I need a mover or a seconder, please, to put that on the floor. Mover by Councillor Cridland, seconded by Councillor Allen. Is there any discussion? Councillor McClellan. I just have one question for Sarah, and it's just a general question, but it could that have gone on an unopened road allowance that maybe somewhere the town could have got some rent for the next 50 years on instead of just going on private land if we have a stub of a road allowance and just wondering if the private sector knows that that's available and we're willing to talk i mean they've picked their spot they've done their studies this one isn't going to change but on anything else um i'm not uh, through you mr mayor to councillor mccudlin i'm not entirely certain if that's possible but i can certainly look into it um Generally, road allowances are reserved so that in the future, if we ever did need to construct uh, infrastructure or roads, um, that we would be able to. But um, I can look and see if we could also use some of that land to um, to have these towers constructed on, on township property. Um, so I can get back to you on that. Thank you. Okay. Is there any other discussion or comments? Okay, seeing none, we'll do a recorded vote. Councillor Gilmore, in favor or opposed? In favor. Councillor McClellan? In favor. Councillor Cridland? In favor. And Councillor Van Bleet? In favor. And that is carried. Okay, uh, I'm going to move on now to um, admin staff report 13 2020 regarding the cancellation reduction or refund the property tax application number 2019-10 and i'll look to our treasurer to speak to that please okay through you mr mayor to all of council this staff report uh, asr 13 is an application for reduction of taxes as a result of damages to the basement from the halloween storm uh, and the municipal portion of this red off is nine dollars and 61 cents Okay, so the motion is that admin staff report ASR 13 2020 respecting cancellation reduction and refund of property tax be received and that council approve the attached application pursuant to section 357 of the Municipal Act 2001 number 2019-10 to write off taxes in the amount of $21.96. Is that that's accurate? Is that what you said, uh, Alan? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, call of council. Yes, that's the total write-off. Uh, so that includes the educational portion as well as the regional portion. The municipal impact is the nine dollars and sixty-one cents that I mentioned. Thank you. I um, need a mover and seconder, please, for that. Councillor McCollum moves it and seconded by Councillor Van Vliet. Is there any discussion on that nine dollars? I don't see any, and I'll uh, have a vote, Councillor Van Vliet. In favor. Councillor Cridland. In favor. Councillor McClellan. In favor. And Councillor Gilmore. In favor. And that is carried. Okay, move on to uh, ASR 14 2020, which is virtually the same thing. Cancellation reduction or refund of property tax application number 2019-11. And I'll look to uh, Ms. Louie to speak to that as well. Thank you. So through the Mayor to all of Council, again, same thing, ASR 14-20 is also an application for reduction of taxes as a result of the Halloween storm, uh, which caused damage to this property's septic system. And the municipal portion of the write-off on this one is $15.34. So again, the, the uh, recommendation will include the, the total write-off, which is regional and educational as well. Okay, so the uh, motion is that admin staff report ASR 14 2020 respecting cancellation reduction and refund of property tax be received and that council approve the attached application pursuant to section 357 of the municipal act 2001 number 2019-11 to write off taxes in the amount of 35 dollars and six cents 
a mover and seconder for that, please. Councilor McClellan and Councilor Gilmore. Any discussion? Councilor Cridlin. Thank you. I thought I'd wait to, through you, Mayor. I thought I'd wait for the second one. Um, could, next time we get these, because they do come up regularly, could we just add to the report sort of like a year to date? Uh, how many adjustments we get. I don't think it adds up material for the remainder of any year, but then there's whatever it looks like for the whole budget year. So um, if we could just maybe add that to, you know, whatever the last one is year to date, we've had this much in terms of uh, um, adjustments or refunds. I don't know if that's easy enough, but I'll just put that out there. Thank you. Okay, I look to the treasurer to speak to that. Yeah, so through you, Mr. Mayor to Councillor Cridlin. Uh, we can certainly do that. Uh, as my next report mentions, we will be reporting regularly, regularly on variance reports, and we do budget for write-offs. Um, so these will be appearing in the write-off section of our uh, general ledger. But we can certainly, when these come forward, we can kind of show what the year-to-date total is uh, so Council has an idea. The trouble with them is they're kind of out of our control. Um, for these ones, an assessor goes out to the property and actually views the property and the damage that's that's occurred. Uh, so township staff doesn't really have the expertise as not having a professional assessor on staff to kind of contradict or disagree with, with MPAC's recommendation. So generally we just take their recommendation uh, and propose that to council for approval. Um, but certainly we can we can have a running total as these appear in front of council. Okay, any other questions? Okay, seeing none, uh, recorded vote. Councillor Gilmore? In favour. Councillor McClellan? In favour. Councillor Cridland? In favour. And Councillor Van Vliet? In favour. And that is carried. Okay, we now move on to ASR 15 2020 finance update. Uh, we'll look to our uh, Ms. Louis to speak to that, please. Thank you. So through Mr. Mayor to all of council. So uh, ASR 15-20, this report is prepared just as kind of a departmental update. And its intent is to promote transparency and accountability for the township's finances uh, with both members of council and taxpayers. So outside of the day-to-day -day accounting functions provided by the department, which include things like payroll, accounts payable, accounts receivable, uh, staff have identified some of the larger tasks required of the township uh, in terms of reporting, which include the annual audit and preparation of our annual financial statements, the capital and operating budgets, completion of the financial information return, as well as reporting requirements from federal and provincial levels of government, which include things like our OCIF funding, uh, the WSIB report, annual reporting, and our bereavement authority of Ontario, which is uh, required by the Cemeteries Act um, reporting. So staff have also provided a list of reports uh, brought before council on an annual basis and the projected timelines of these reports uh, leading into early 2021. Uh, again, this report is just for information and intended to provide insight to both council and residents when to expect financial reports. And uh, we found it especially timely to communicate due to the distancing and pandemic, the distancing the pandemic has caused for everyone. Uh, and as our CAO mentioned earlier, staff are meeting regularly to discuss the pandemic and we'll have another financial impact report coming forward uh, to the June 2nd meeting with some actual costs that have incurred uh, outside of budget and uh, some things that staff have, have done to kind of mitigate those costs um, with actual numbers from March through May. Okay, thank you. So uh, the motion is admin staff report ASR 15 2020 respecting finance department update be received for information. And uh, can I have a mover and seconder for that please? Councillor McClellan moves it, seconds by Councillor Gilmore. Any other discussion? Councillor Cridlin. Uh, again, thank you very much for this report through you, Mayor. Um, I would, if it was, I wouldn't mind adding this to the um, orientation package for councillors uh, in the future. I think this is an excellent document as a, you know, as a base to know what's coming uh, forward. So, uh, so thank you very much for, um, 
bringing this to us uh, tonight. Um, when I look at this, uh, again, we won't, you know, I've only been doing this for a little bit, but um, maybe Ma uh, the treasurer could just highlight what our, we're going to see as new reports uh, for 2020 um, uh, as we go through the year. So some of these I think we've seen before, but uh, uh, what, which ones would, would then be new for this year? Thank you. Okay, any other comments or discussion? Okay, uh, go ahead, uh, Mallory. So through you, Mr. Mayor, to Councillor Cridlin. Uh, so in terms of this report, uh, the majority of the, the reports listed on there are annual reports that we bring forward in front of Council uh, regularly. Uh, so the ones that uh, we're kind of putting an increased focus on for this year would be our variance reporting. So we will be uh, reporting variance reports for Q1 and Q2, as well as Q3 and then Q4. And we'll be coming forward with a recommendation um, from year-end figures uh, in terms of where to pull from or contribute to reserves in terms of what our year-end figures look like. Okay, thank you. Anything further on that one? Okay, it's on the floor. I'll look for a recorded vote, please. Councillor Van Vliet to receive it. In favor. Councillor Cridlin. In favor. Councillor McCullen. In favor. Councillor Gilmore. In favor. And that is carried. Okay, we'll move on to our bylaw enforcement uh, report, uh, 2020 first quarter statistical report. And I believe we have Mr. Gudgeon on uh, today for that. We'll look for a report from him, please. Um, yeah, I'm just looking at, uh, I think I can get video going, but I am. Um, uh, um, so basically this is the uh, quarterly report um, that outlines statistics uh, within the bylaw department, um, current year to date. Okay, we're losing you, uh, Lee. Oh, there you are. We lost the audio. Oh, okay, perfect. I think we're, I think we're back. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So this is the uh, quarterly report. Uh, Council had previously uh, um, uh, reports be brought on a quarterly basis uh, with an annual report uh, coming at year end. It's the uh, quarter one um, review. Um, current year to date and preview for council's consideration. Okay, thank you. And uh, make a motion that the bylaw enforcement staff report B, uh, BSR 004 2020 respecting the 2020 first quarter stat report be received for information. A mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Cridlin and Councillor McClellan. And any discussion on those numbers? Interesting. Uh, I don't see anybody else. I see current year to date complaints 28, previous year 28. So we are moving right along on that. Um, is there anything unique there, or is it just people are, are phoning in more, or is any reason for that that we know of? People are spending more time at home and have time to look around and walk the neighborhood. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. No, we had don't. Have uh, indeed, yet. through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we've uh, we've actually had uh, confirmation that um, there are, in fact, residents uh, all across the Niagara region that, according to bylaw uh, officers and officials, that um, things that pre. Obviously, um, are beginning to be an issue because, in fact, they are home and yeah. uh, are actually seeing what's going on around their property and it disturbs them. So um, there are some shifts taking place um, as far as uh, we're nothing if not consistent. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, any other comments, questions? Okay, seeing none, uh, it's on the floor. Recorded vote, please. Councillor Van Vliet. In favor. Steve. Yeah, Councillor Cridlin. In favor. Councillor McClellan. In favor. 
And Councillor Gilmour. In favor. All right, and that is carried. And now we go to um, P Public Works Staff Report 003 2020, uh, storm pipe repairs on Lakeshore Road. Uh, Mr. Nan, uh, if you would speak to that, please give us an overview of your report. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Um, I'm following a right. conflict, so I'm going to shut off my mute video. Yes. Okay. Okay, and I can uh, verify that Councillor McClellan's uh, is audio is gone and his video is gone. So, okay, and uh, Mr. Nan, go ahead. Through your worship to members of council, this is the report that was requested uh, to be brought forward regarding the repairs that need to be done on Lakeshore Road Storm Pipe Outlet. Um, as you recall from the last council meeting, um, we um, council waived the procedural bylaw and the purchasing bylaw to uh, allow staff to go out for three quotes. Uh, and as you can see, they are uh, uh, drastically different. Um, we did mm -hmm. manage to get three quotes and three contractors to meet on site individually. Uh, and the quotes, as you see, uh, one actually falls within our purchasing uh, bylaws. Uh, and purchasing policies, um, actually two of them are pretty pretty close to it. So we're nowhere near the anticipated uh, costing of 70,000. Um, but again, uh, this is a report outlining that uh, we're seeking permission to go ahead with the lowest bidder uh, and Mallory will have to uh, speak to as far as the, uh, I think it's gonna be coming out of one of the reserve funds because it wasn't budgeted for during the regular anticipated year. Okay, thank you. Um, we'll put it on the floor first of all. Uh, the motion that Public Works Staff Report 003-2020 respecting storm pipe repairs on Lakeshore Road be received and that Council direct staff to award the project to Anthony's Excavating to complete the project in the amount of $24,973. Of a mover and a seconder please put that on the floor. Councillor Van Vliet moves it. Seconded by Councillor Gilmore and discussion please. Seeing none, uh, Mallory, did you want to speak to that at all there uh, in regards to the funding? Uh, sure, so through you, Mr. Mayor Trollof Council. So as our manager of operations indicated, uh, although this is within our purchasing policy uh, and staff can authorize this purchase, it is however an unbudgeted item. So it would have to have council approval to be funded from a reserve. Uh, at this point, uh, prior to our 2019 audited reserve schedule, um, I don't have an actual reserve to rec I could recommend it come from one or another, but um, since we're spending the money in the current year, we could come back once we have audited financial statements and uh, a final reserve schedule from 2019 and propose at that point, once we know our ending balances, uh, which, which reserve we would like to fund this from. Okay, thank you. Any other comments from that? Okay, seeing none, it's on the floor. Recorded vote, Councillor Gilmore. In favor. Councillor Van Vliet. In favor. Councillor Cridland. In favor. And Councillor, who am I missing here? Nobody. McClellan, a picture is gone. Yeah, he's, uh, he's not involved. Councillor yeah, McClellan? No, he's no, not he's involved. Not. <laughs> right, of course. <laughs> Okay, so uh, that is carried. Thank you. You can come back in there, uh, Councillor McClellan. Thank you, sir. I tried to count your vote, but no. I, oh, I heard you. <laughs> Trying to get me Okay, move on to uh, review of correspondence. And uh, there's quite a lengthy document from Niagara Region and sent out up to all the uh, local area municipalities and uh, everybody's had a look at it so the motion is that the correspondence c 120 2020 respecting government relations strategy be received and the council formally endorse motions that support the collaboration between all of niagara's communities and the niagara region 
and that staff be directed to actively collaborate with local government agencies to ensure the exchange of critical information in the development of short, medium, and long-term impacts of COVID-19. A mover and a seconder to put that on the floor, please. Councillor Van uh, Cridlin uh, moves it and Councillor Van Vliet seconds it. And any discussion on all that? Councillor Cridlin. Uh, thank you through you, Mayor. Um, I, again, the list I know is not exclusive as to what um, the chair, uh, the regional chair has outlined. Um, but I wouldn't mind if appropriate, and again, I'll look to, you know, the CAO around including Roma as a organization that is absolutely key for a municipality like us. So uh, again, I know there was no intention and it's not an exclusive list. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other discussion? Okay, seeing none, uh, recorded vote to uh, support this. And uh, Councillor Gilmore? In favor. Councillor Van Vliet? In favor. Councillor Cridland? In favor. And Councillor McClellan? In favor. And that is carried. Okay, that. Um, Basically, is the evening. Just do the uh, the bylaw that um, bylaw being uh, to appoint members to the committee of adjustment, property standards, fence viewers, and dog control bylaw appeals committee to the township of Wayfleet be read and passed this twelfth day of May, twenty twenty. Remover seconder for that. Councillor Cridland moves it. Councillor McClellan seconds it. Discussion. Okay, uh, recorded vote, Councillor Gilmore. In favor. Councillor um, Van Vliet. In favor. Councillor Cridland. In favor. And Councillor McCollum. In favor. All right, and that is carried. Are there any notices of motion this evening? Uh, look to uh, the CIO. Uh, Mr. Mayor, through you, um, although not technically the new business area of the agenda, this may be an appropriate place for members to discuss whether they would like to have the uh, information regarding the fire uh, hall uh, come back to either a future meeting of council, next regular meeting, or if you would like to provide direction to staff to try and arrange uh, a special meeting uh, between now and uh, June 2nd, which is your next regular meeting. Okay, thank you. I uh, look for input on that. Uh, anybody? I, I think that we should have a special meeting on it myself, and I think it could be a, a time consuming discussion, and but uh, an important one, obviously. So I my guess would be to ask staff to prepare for a special meeting between now and June 2nd. However, uh, everybody else jump in with your opinions. Councilor McCall. Yeah, I'll second that. I think it's something we need to do sooner than later. Okay, uh, Councillor Van Vliet, you had your hand up. Um, since there's a meeting scheduled tomorrow, is that too soon to get us all together to do it? Or could we just all zoom into that meeting? Or would we all like to walk away and think about it for a while? Yeah, I, um, I thought about that too, but I don't think that the agenda can get published properly. Uh, I'll look to the clerk for that, please. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, to all of council, we cer certainly can make that happen. We would just need to change um, a special meeting to emergency meeting based on the requirements of notice under the procedure bylaw. But we can certainly make that happen if council directs uh, us to do that. Okay. Uh, what are the thoughts on that? I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. No. Do we have to host it at three o'clock? Yeah. Could we change the time? Make it a I have no plans until August, maybe. <laughs> well, I'm still working. I know yeah. Council Gilmore is as well. Okay. It, we're all, we yeah, I, I think we were only meeting at three o'clock to accommodate uh, um, some staff that were going to be part of the committee. So um, we made it 
seven o'clock tomorrow night. Is that uh, okay with everybody? Councilor Quinlan, you're shaking your head no. Well, I, I have a small conflict, but it, in, you know, it's not, uh, it's not as material as talking about a fire hall, that's for sure. But uh, is it possible to have one more day? I, I would like to take the time to read. I didn't uh, prepare for it, so an extra day for preparation would be a huge benefit to me because I wasn't going to be sitting on the committee. So, Okay, um, I would be okay with Thursday night except um, at 8.45 we're doing the lights over here at the arena if it's not pouring rain. So I would need to be out of that meeting by 8.30. So if we were to start at 6.30 with an absolute shutdown at, at 8.30, um, I'm okay with Thursday. So everybody else okay with Thursday? Still no plans. Yeah. <laughs> everybody else? No issue? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. Yeah. Let's do it um, Thursday. Let's. Can we begin at 6.30 if that's okay with everybody? and uh for th on thursday the 14th and uh, uh as i say i'll have to absolutely have it wrapped up by 8 30. so another obligation okay um there's no notices so uh there's no closed meeting and uh so not no rise in report so no other business Okay, confirming bylaw then, proceeding uh, for council this evening, bylaw number 23, 2020, the bylaw number 23 being a bylaw to adopt, ratify, and confirm the proceedings of the council of the Corporation of the Township of Wayne at its meeting held April 28th and May 12th, 2020, be read and passed this 12th day of May, 2020. I have a motion to put that on the floor, please. Uh, Councillor Gilmore and then second by Councillor Van Vliet. Any discussion? Okay, seeing none. Uh, Councillor McClellan, in favor or opposed? In favor. Councillor Cridland? In favor. Councillor Gilmore? In favor. And Councillor Van Vliet? In favor. And that is carried. Uh, if there's no other business or concerns, our meeting is adjourned. Right. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.